everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. We're going to take a look at the German Panzer IV by Plastic Soldier Company. It's another one of their 15 millimeter uh, vehicles. And this comes with five vehicles. And when you open it up, well, let's take a look at the box real quick. I always love their box art. And then on the back, it doesn't have the construction um, con instructions on the back. We just got like some art, which is good because I mean, I can hit the internet and look for paint patterns, but since I'm not very good at painting them yet, it is kind of nice to see some examples right there on the box. And then just a, a little bit of history and how to apply some of that paint. But what I really like is checking out the sprues. And this is actually, I'm, I'm going to say similar to the 20 millimeter kit. The 20 millimeter kit, each vehicle actually has two sprues. So on the 15 millimeter kit, it all could, does come on one sprue. You can build three variants. You can build an F model, a G, and an H. Uh, really the difference is the H model, you can just add your shirts in to the turret and then the, the body. The G model, really the H and G model share the same cannon. And then the F model has a little stub gun. So you can build three variants. Um, it's a little bit different than their Russian T-34 where it actually had two separate turrets. So all of the models share the same turret. Um, and then if you wanted, you could probably maybe magnetize the turret somehow. I mean, you had to get really small magnets. But that way you could swap out between, say, your F and then your GH model. If I was really cool, I could figure out how to magnetize the shirts. And so then I could really switch between the, the G and the H. But again, what I really like about their sprues is the contact points to the different parts are fairly minimum. So the tracks have just one point of contact on each side. And I'm comparing this to my uh, Zvezda model kits where like the track had five points of contact and they were all in the middle of the track. Some of the, the pieces like the shirts and have multiple points of contacts, but they're really easy to clean up. And very little flash. I mean, you really have to get in and look to see any kind of flash that you might have to scrape off yourself. But the pieces themselves are very clean. And putting the model together is pretty simple. It was, I mean, it's not difficult. It does come with instructions, but um, really all you need the instructions for is like to see maybe where to place like the little road wheel container, maybe one of the extra road wheels. It does come with two different commander figures. I believe the 20 millimeter only came with one. So there's just a couple extra options to kind of customize your tanks a little bit. But overall, it's a really good kit to put together. So this is what it looks like assembled. I went ahead and put the shirts in on. Generally, when I when I had my 20 millimeter forces, I, I had several kits of their their Panzer IVs. I built with the shirts in and without the shirts in. But, I mean, I gotta admit, that just looks pretty smexy with the shirts and sides on. Now, one thing I did learn from building the 20 millimeter kits is you have to be careful because the shirts in doesn't always line up very well. Maybe I can show you. For instance, here, I mean, unless I'm placing the shirts in wrong, but in order to make all the points of contact fit, if you put the road wheels in according to the box, there's one of the kind of the, the shirts in, I'm not sure what you call that, but the part that holds the shirts into the body, it actually will hit this road wheel. So I actually had to kind of trim that down in order to make it fit in where I thought was the appropriate place for the shirts in to be. I mean, that's minor surgery. The other thing too is if you place this extra road, road wheel here at the far back, which um, when I was looking at the picture, the pictures, you don't see it too well here, uh, but the pictures kind of indicate that that extra road wheel kind of fits near the very back. But, I mean, you know, you just got to be careful. Place your shirts in first would probably be the best thing to do. Place the shirts in on first before you attach your side pieces. I mean, even here, you might run into a problem with the gas can being under this spot here but just kind of plan it out a little bit I've gone ahead and just went with the simple route where I'll place the parts kind of according to the instructions and then just shave down anything on the shirts and that's in the way 
because once you glue the shirts and down at several points it's not going anywhere it's going to hold on really nice so you end up with a really nice looking kit just got to plan it a little bit and again I like to compare it with my Zvezda model now the Zvezda currently their Panzer IV is an F model and I'm always curious what's the difference because right now until I get more Panzer IV H's I'm just substituting my F's on the board as like a G and an H model without shirts and I mean I can do that it's my my house um, but like differences I've noticed was this cupola is a little bit different it's higher on the F model the turret seems a little bit smaller one big difference on the turret is you don't have this back part here on the turret like I'm not quite sure what this is in reality to me I always thought that's where they store ammo but I'm used to seeing that on like the modern day Abrams tank um, the a lot of detail what's interesting is the company has kind of put different details or emphasis on different parts I mean they both have headlights but the headlights are bigger on the Zvezda model this is definitely the stub gun of like your you know the F model if you want to use that this was the D I think I said this was the F this is the D model but if you're gonna play it as an F model it has the stub gun um, one thing I've noticed too because from like the F model to the G is it has a the body comes all the way out whereas here on the F or on the um, D model it kinda cuts in a little bit where the gun is so the the, the platforms overall are very similar the the models themselves have just a little bit different like textures like here you actually have bolts these are indents so they're both really good looking kits but the Zvezda model is definitely a lot easier to put together but you end up with like some gaps because it's kind of a snap together kit but on your plastic soldier company model uh, because it builds more like a model kit and you glue it it actually has very few gaps and mostly once you paint it up those gaps are covered so very very good uh, the other thing I like to do is actually compare it to the 20 millimeter kit so once again you can kinda see a difference in size you know just depending on your gaming needs um, you can see here when I was building the 20 millimeter I actually kinda put the shirts in I had to I moved the shirts in just a little bit forward to kind of account for those road wheels that are right here you know but again it's you just kind of you have to plan out exactly how you want to place your shirts and for it to work but comparing the 15 millimeter and the 20 millimeter it, it still amazes me how exactly alike they are even though the size difference is quite noticeable but when I'm looking here, I mean, I pretty much see all the bumps and rivets are in the exact same spots, just smaller. One thing I might do on some of my uh, smaller versions is with the turret. I don't know how this looks. I thought it was kind of cool. Was I went ahead and cut these side panels here. That way you can see the door. And I didn't really have a way to open the door, but... I, I think that's just a way to add a little bit of variety to some of your tanks. Just open up those side panels on the shirts in and glue them open. And that way you have some variety. And so I might try that on one of my smaller 15 millimeters and see how it holds up. But that is a overview of the tank. So I now have five of these. I have to assemble a few more. But this was going to give me all together I'll have um, nine T-34s and nine uh, Panzer IVs and that's going to let me do a little more work with my experimenting of the uh, the Panzer rule set and miniatures. I'm just going to grab a, uh, a couple more models and I'll have enough Panzers and T-34s to do the very first scenario. So I'm looking forward to that and I hope you all continue to watch and give me your suggestions and ideas and I'll talk to you all later. Alright, thanks.